OneNote. Okay, status. I haven't done anything on 1102, but what I know is that someone found a, a nasty bug that I marked as blocking. So if anyone wants to look at it, at least to confirm or deny. Let's see, Orchard. Issues, issues, issues. Um, milestone 102. Um, so this one is an easy one, but we should do it. Um, this one, it's, we don't care. But this one, generated content will not be displayed. I asked for a repro, and he said, add a new culture. Manage content, so create a new a new content item. Restart Orchard, and the managed content doesn't show up the the items. Or may no, maybe it's I don't know. Is it is it expected actually? Maybe the content is filtered by culture, and there is a drop down. It's possible too. I can't remember what, or maybe this is the issue that I was also talking about. That sometimes it just loses stuff in the database if you exit it. That's weird. Uh, I'm not, not sure what but it means. It says it, it can repro, so... Yeah. So we should try that. Yeah, I saw that, so I tagged it. Uh, the other one here is just adding an environment variable for VS 2017 in the build script. That will be easy. But this one seems weird. Um, yep. And we have a spec for test for uh, the culture, so that should work. Maybe just tire or something. We should not care. Let's see. So everything otherwise is ready for one and two. All the fashion numbers, the CI, everything works. So six days ago, um, the reference exception in the home alias service this thing can be null. So there is a conversion here. I don't remember in which context, but the PR was explicit about when it will happen. So merge, uh, logging errors during media upload. Yeah, I had a customer who had, um, well, I had a customer. Someone on Gitter mentioned that the media will not show up in the screen, but will be saved in Azure Web Storage. So what I found is that when we upload the image and there is an exception, we return it to the client, but we don't log it. So we could not see something, what was wrong, uh, even though the client had the message. And then it was obvious what the issue was. Um, then calling rule service renamed after it's been renamed after it's been renamed yes the event was called before the role was renamed now it's called after it's renamed so you can get the new name um, this is a fix in the dev branch for open id multiple fixes on open id uh, merge 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 and merge many merges because i merged the wrong thing at some point i had to remerge again so that's it. Questions? Nope. Um, Orchard 2. Orchard Core. Eventually. At one point, we'll rename everything. Some things have been renamed already, but not everything. So seven days, six days. Um, yeah, we tried to replace iClock, which was from Orchard to iSystem Clock, which is in ASP.NET Core, but they have two iSystem Clock in different packages and in the implementation one, not in the abstraction one. So we're not using it back. We are back to iClock. Um, Recipe extra params. This is a PR from Sergio, which has been merged, which uh, lets us um, well, there are multiple. How, how does it happen? Oh, because we didn't close the. Let me see. 
one sec. Let me clean my repository in case I can clean it. Okay, and now we should see less things. Nope, this branch hasn't been um, removed. We'll, I talk about it on the check-in for the PR, so I don't want to talk about it right now. Um, this is another PR. Updates. This is John Thierry working on Razor Pages. So you know Razor Pages? Uh, I didn't talk about it last week. No, so Razor Pages, if you were at Harvest or you watched the video, is a way to create uh, pages, meaning routed content, um, from a single CSHTML file. So just create a CSHTML file and add a at page at the top, and it will be routed directly to this view. So you don't need to create a controller if you don't want to. You only create a view model if you don't want to. So it will be very easy like <clears throat> to create content page right from a, a static a static file. You don't have to build anything to compile anything. So that, that's good. So he's working on Horizon Pages and it works, but we filed three bugs on the MVC repository that will block us from using Horizon Page. So they will fix them. Um, allow to use attribute routing. So while he was doing the Razor page, he enabled attribute routing. So he ext extracted this feature into the main branch. So now we can use attribute routing like this. Again, an improvement over Orchard, Orchard 1 because we could not do that in Orchard 1. But you see, demo about, demo, and it will use the tenant base um, if necessary. So that's cool. With just one line. Um, upgrade libraries from Nick, updating all the dependencies, yes, SQL, Markdown, things like this, OpenID. Uh, one more here, code cleanup, uh, code cleanup, code cleanup, yeah, removing some async await which are necessary or removing cancellation tokens usage because actually that the only effect is to add more logs to the R log when we don't care details. Um, this is custom setup branch again, updating packages. So this is Nick um, who refactored the solution, some projects that we have we could remove because they didn't make sense or rename. So like Microsoft SP Core MVC modules abstraction is called now Orchard MVC abstractions. So when you do an MVC app, you can just reference that and you will have an MVC app and be able to use all the things from MVC. Um, so good. And you see all the namespaces also have changed. Um, fixing, so it's a UI fix from Matthias. The children don't appear in Firefox. Fixing namespaces because of his previous PR. Uh, Orchard logging module. So this is a PR that we merged from Sergio that adds a N log by default to the CMS.web project. Logging is defined per application. And in our CMS sample, we use N log. Okay. And it's very nice. Just one simple um, configuration file and this class which will inject the tenant name in the um, nlog uh, context so we can reuse it in the log file and next step from Sergio is to move this class from the web app to a different package not a module but a package that will own this class so yep um, that's it see the startup here is just saying add nlog web uh, and log factory add and log. So that should be very easy. Uh, tag helpers from Jantier and the PR, which is about uh, adding an extension method to register a tag helper from an assembly when it's not in your module. Um, this one is the PR from Sergio. Oh, we have, so actually, sorry, we haven't merged this one. So this one, custom setup, is about being able to, from a module, to override the default setup view 
So you can have your own forms or set of forms and all the content from the form will be sent to the setup recipes. So the recipes can use any variable from the forms that you have in your custom setup or your custom setup override. So you can reuse the setup module and just create a view in the theme or in your own module that will uh, redefine the setup screen. Uh, that's the idea. I'm not sure it's compiling, but uh, it's still work in progress. I saw that this morning, Sergio. That doesn't look like something that, well, maybe it compiles, but that looks so weird to me. Okay. Uh, questions on that? Boot and switch, there is, this is a PR, I assume. Yes, this is a PR to add, um, so first to make the Boolean field uh, compatible with editor, so you can define other editors than just the default one, which is a checkbox on the Boolean field. And you also made one new editor, which is called the switch editor. Oops, oops, Ooh. completely broken just by opening this thing. Oh my God. The switch editor, which is a switch using a bootstrap CSS or JavaScript, a uh, special one. Um, that's it. Questions? Uh, that and run. So I made a module called, let me see who's in the meeting. There is no Benedict, there is no Zoltan. There is a Janos, so Janos will know. I assume there is a module called Orchard dot in the CMS Orchard dot liquid. What is liquid? You should all know what liquid is because we've talked about it many times, and also Lombic because they made a module in Orchard one. Liquid is a template engine. It's like handlebars. Okay, and that's why I already talked about it because at the point where we started using handlebars for tokens, I also mentioned liquid and I started with handlebars. And then John Terry tried to make handlebars a template engine for shapes, a shape template engine. And um, it worked, but the issue with that is handlebars is really not adapted for shape templates. Uh, so then I looked at Liquid and in the meantime, I had an idea about using the template engine, but not for shapes, but for content. Um, so it looks like this, when you enable this module, you have uh, a new content type called liquid page and a liquid widget. They are based on the liquid part. The liquid part is exactly like a body part, but or a markdown part. It's just the body of a content item. But instead of um, rendering pure HTML or pure markdown, it's evaluating a template in the liquid language. So here, if I say new liquid page, by the way, liquid widget should not be there, but I fixed it in the recipe. So liquid page. Um, let's see how it works. So I have liquid page is just an, like the standard page, title, auto route, and a liquid body, okay? The body of the content item. It's using code mirror in, in this case. And um, so the preview, I broke it. It doesn't work since I'm using code mirror, but I know why. That's sad, but we'll do without it. So if I do h1 foo slash h1, it's, I will just Oh, I need to give it a title, uh, foo, publish, preview, publish. I will use a preview here. Now I will open a, a new thing here, there. This will be my preview. And I will go to foo. Okay, I have foo here as h1, so this is evaluated as HTML. And in liquid, it's like handlebars, you can do um, moustaches. You can do uh, curly braces and paste something like, like a string. Publish f5, have the string. And variables, uh, what can I use here? Can I use numbers? Not even sure. doesn't work but um, so what you can use is content item this is 
the variable that represents this content item. Okay, so let's say you have fields and things like this, you could define how it will render the full thing apart from the title in this case, because title is a part. But here, content item, if I want to reuse the content, the, the ID, which is database ID, content item ID, this works. Uh, but what you need to use is not the ID, it doesn't make sense. You need to use a content item ID. Okay, so that works. And you can use all the things which are on the content item class because it's opt-in and they've been um, created. You can do something like this. So if I do created, which is a created UTC, I remove the UTC here. Uh, maybe I should put them back, put it back. You can pipe the result of this variable to what they call filters. There is one which will format a date using um, a, form a date format like uh, MM for the month publish. Nope created UTC and we need documentation or oh, I will look at the source code yeah that was created UTC that's good so here MM and if I do for M's it should be the full name April okay and then you can do uh, uh, what you want April D something like this just to show how it works okay Good, it works. Uh, so we have access to content item. We also have access to a variable called um, content. No, to content, but as part of the content item. So it has a property. It's like chaining in tokens, content property on the content item. If I just write this, it should dump the JSON object. It doesn't. So let me see uh, if I do then title part dot uh, title doesn't dump we, we can change it to dump the thing if we just call content so you see here we have foo which is the title of the thing and if we want the slug it's auto route part dot path publish five foo okay that's the slug foo so that works we can reuse anything that is coming from the, the json content from the content item um, so that's cool. And dot liquid has very nice features um, in terms of uh, yeah, the filters here are, are, are very nice. You can there are many like date and you can do append foo. Stupid, but you, there are many filters and you can extend them. So that's nice. Uh, see foo appended to the date. But that's interesting. There is another object that I enable. Okay, this this is yeah, this is what this is the part that is interesting. So um, in this website, I have six blog posts. What I made is an object called query. Okay, and with that, there are properties which have different behavior. So you can say query. So you can do a for loop. I will do a for loop. I will do for post in this thing, which will be query dot content type. And here to pass fake parameters, I am using an indexer blog post dot um, I will do list list is the terminator uh, so I will do that and then here you can use a template for instance and content uh, post is the content item property so I can do dot content dot um, title part dot title and for refresh and you see here I have many posts the all the posts here and it's better to say for instance h5 publish f5 and now I have all the posts here now if you want to take the last three of them let's say we want to make so this page foo is rendering all the blog posts now I, I want to make a widget a typical scenario I want to make a widget, so I will go to layers and I will create, um, it's ugly and responsive. I will create a new widget, a liquid widget. I will call it recent blog post. Oh, come back. Here I will render the title and in the body I paste the same thing, but instead of taking all the blog posts, I will do um, order by descending. And here, oh, 
things like this created dot take three dot list okay and I will uh, display the title we can render that as a URL so a href well, let's start with that simple always so on all the pages in the I will put them in the content here you cool and I will go on the home page and you can see I have a recent blog post six five and four this is it order by sending created take three and if you want a URL you can just do href this is a and 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 here we can use a slug but the slug well it will work let's say auto route part dot path so this should work in this case okay this will work in this case because we don't have a tenant if we had a tenant or if we want to make it work with a tenant we should actually use another object which is called context which is the HTTP request uh, dot request the HTTP context sorry, dot request dot uh, path base okay publish and in this case it will still work okay but it will also work on a, on a tenant that's the idea um, yeah so yeah, I, I think that's very nice from a template to be able to at least execute a query. There are other things we, could, we would maybe want to do, like managing shapes and things like this. And actually, in Liquid, there is a syntax to to render a shape um, or a template. Let's call it template. Uh, I think I saw this like this. So the syntax would be you type the name of the shape. Okay, like uh, a name of a shape. Uh, date time. It's a name. Um, and you can pipe it to a filter that we could call shape, for instance, or display. Okay, and then pass parameters. Uh, so display, and then I don't know foo, or maybe this is this way. I I I, I can't remember the syntax, but there is display like. Uh, A, B, C, you can pass parameters. I'm not sure it's there. They are named. They are named things. So I don't, not really sure how to call them. It's like A something, B something, C something. I, I will check. But yeah, that's the idea. You can add stuff like this. So I think that that could be a powerful um, comments. Yeah. I will explain the reasoning behind that. Um, we can. So, um, why that thing? Because we're working on the razor pages, well, mostly Jean Thierry, um, and the scenario for a razor page is you create your content types, like you create news, a news content type, and you file some news. Now, what you want to do with the news you created is to display them somewhere as a widget or on a page or both of them. So, what we will do in Orchard One from there is, you, is create a query, okay? And then you define the query with like 10, 20 clicks. And then you create a projection to render this query and define how to render it, like using the which layout, like from a shape, from a, anything. And then you want a widget, then you create another widget projection and you also uh, do that. And it's, it's very nice because you don't have to write any file or code or whatever. At the same time, it's not nice because you can't write any code or you have to to do with what's available in the UI, or then you or you just use a, a shape layout, and you create yeah, that, a file. That's not the issue. The issue is that you're querying from the. I'm, I will go. To, I will go from the template here. Yeah. Why don't you have a, a little 
Uh, no, no, no. Editor, you are talking or, about something I don't want to talk yet. It's not my. Can, well, you can create some uh, view model and then that's what you display. What's that's wrong with not, that? I'm just explaining why I came to this module. The, the query is something else. Just want to go on with the with the explanation. Um, so, so first thing is how do you make rendering custom stuff custom stuff simpler than just by clicking everywhere? Razor Pages is very nice for that because in Razor Pages you just create then you just create a file and you can render whatever you want. Okay, um, if you want, so the difference between a Razor Page and a shape is that. Uh, um, a razor page is routed, so it's accessible directly from the UI. It's a page, okay? You don't have to create yet again another content item to be able to display something. Some, for some people, it's better to create a file than just go in the configuration and create a content item in the database. That's the first thing. We could extend that in a razor page because in, in a razor page, you can resolve any service. You can call any module service and you can call the content manager to do your thing in the content manager. That's fine too. Okay, um, so we, so I think that's nice to have resource pages. That, that's that's something. But the issue with resource pages is that you need access to the file system, and you don't want to give access to anyone to the file system. Like I, if I'm just an editor and not a developer, you don't want to give the editors the access to the to the file system, even they, if they want to create a complex template because they are the designer and everything. And I don't know. Uh, we could have Razor in the in the admin, but you can't have Razor in the admin. If you put Razor in the admin anywhere, you give access to everything in the system, to the full, to all the tenants, to all the databases, to break everything, to to give more permissions and all. Okay, so you can't use Razor in the in the in the admin. So you need to use a template engine that is secure, that only accept stuff that you have specified or that will not allow anything that is dangerous. So uh, handlebars does that. You can't call anything in handlebars that is not from the model. And Equin also does that. Same thing. You have to opt in for everything or provide some objects, which again will opt in for every single property which has to be defined. You can't call anything that is not opted in uh, for, for this thing. This is the, um, the exception here. It's just properties, are, well, not this one. Yes, this one. Because every time we have access to a property, we check that it's in the JSON document and return the JSON document, the JSON document property. So that's the idea. We need a template engine, which is not Razor uh, for security reasons. Then queries. Yes, it's bad to have queries there. Arguments. You want me to, to tell yes. you why it's bad? Yes, I agree. So, <laughs> it, I mean, so first we will duplicate all the the same queries again and again everywhere. Then also we need people to understand what a query means. And it's dangerous instead of perf, in terms of perf, because people will do queries that will put the system down, probably. At the same time, I think that's a nice way to be able to just consume content if you have a, a little bit of knowledge about what the data is and yeah, querying I'm the data. I'm not asking you to kill the scenario. What I'm suggesting is that you have a separate editor that, that yep. is okay. for uh, massaging your your model. Maybe yep. maybe it's uh, uh, something where you can actually uh, modify the shape of the view model and add a property that's called recent blog post, and then you yep. describe what that is. But in the in the body of the view, you only have really you know, uh, displaying data and nothing, yep. nothing more, no query, so, no actual query. And so, this way you can decide when you run that, that query instead of having to run it when you render. Okay. Another suggestion, because um, I, I thought about the, or when we thought about the, the, the projection module, which has the, the way to model queries. If we just take about, if you just think about queries and how to model them, again, it's lots of clicks to be able to build a, a, a query and sometimes we could just issue a SQL query and and be done. Should we have a module 
And in terms of syntax, I really like what you what you wrote there. That that's really nice. Yeah, should we have a module that, like you said, that would be like the query screen, but not based on UI, but based on a language which can be something like this, which can be more evolved, a DSL, yeah. which could be SQL, which could be anything, which could be the solution search, and and then maybe you can just uh, maybe it's yeah, like like a DSL in front of the projection engine, maybe. Maybe it's projection. a different way of uh, of expressing a projection. So when I designed the projection module for Shot Core, I explicitly se separated the uh, Lucene and uh, the SQL because you might have multiple sources of projection. I don't like the term projection because projection is also UI. It's also, it's, it's, if we just take the query part. I'm talking about the query part, yes. Yeah, if we talk about the query part, we have many multiple sources of content. And, and yes, maybe we should have different DSLs for different sources. So Umbraco has this idea of hives and, and they're doing pretty much what you're doing here. I have no idea. What is that? So they have, well, I don't know how it is now, but a few years ago, they had this idea of hives, which were like uh, uh, roots of contents, you know, like you had your, you, you had content stores basically. And you could drill into the, into those from a view if you wanted to. Okay. Yep, so you'd, at least if we had a way to just say here queries dot uh, recent blog posts. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And then these queries just actually define somewhere else. And it can be from the search engine, it can be from the SQL. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Yep. But it's doable. We can do things like this. And we need the DSL because we don't want to give access to the SQL unless you have super permissions for that. Because again, with SQL, you can break everything. Um, so that's bad. Uh, One question, Sebastian, the syntax that you're using here in the, in the for loop, does that, uh, did you have to do anything special to expose that to the to the templating engine or does it just work off of an existing .NET object graph and you can just so, dereference it? So the for loop here, this thing, for post in foo, this is liquid, okay? This yeah, is what they right. call... Uh, no, I meant more the when you the, were navigating through the properties this thing, of the query. Query content yeah. type, this is my object. So okay. I ref so, it, so it allows you to access like an arbitrary CLR object within the context of the template. Yeah, let me show you because it's even better. Query drop, it's, it's better to show you. So query drop, and here it's from drop. This is opt-in for uh, being an object inside liquid. And then every property is available. Oh, you see, content type, order by, order by descending. There is a where, a skip, and a take. So when I do, so I provide an instance of this object to the template with a content manager and a session, a SQL session. And then when you type dot content type, it returns a content type drop, which itself has nothing actually, but just an indexer. And when the indexer is called, because the content type drop has access to the main query drop, which has a, the yes, SQL query, when, the, when you call the indexer, I just call where with content type equals the indexer. Same thing for order by, I have a set of property that I will check and order by the thing here. And um, yeah, take is simple also. Take, you see, I'm just calling take with the value as an integer. That's, so it's building, yeah. So these properties are from C sharp objects. And list is on the query object because every time you call content type or anything, it will return, it will return the, Yep, the query object. Yeah, so query. here is another thing here. Uh, you are uh, you are forced to express things as strings even when they are not strings and then convert them to ints. You, you're basically, uh, you depend on the liquid syntax here. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you separated that, that expression of the query, then you could you could have your own DSL, DSL. that would be better. Yeah, totally. Um, 
this thing actually I, I i asked them because i'm like it's stupid you pass an object but it's always a string what's the point and it fails if you try to access it so i think there are bugs in in the in the engine um i have to check but yeah uh, yeah yeah probably um, so, so basically, you can continue to dereference objects and their properties as long as everything that you get back is a draw. Yes, or implements I liquid something. Yes, that's for the security reason. You can't pass anything with a with a white flag for everything. You can't. You can. The, the only thing I'm doing, which is sort of a white flag, a white list, sorry, is this JToken thing. Uh, when I put that JToken drop, which takes a JToken, and you can intercept when a property is accessed, any property, if it's not if it doesn't exist, and you can then um, return what you want. So here, everything I I see is called. I look at what it represents in the content, and I return a new JToken drop or the value. And by the way, this is a two string to be able to dump. Who cares? Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, yep, okay. So also, just talking about the liquid part or liquid widget, liquid, liquid page, um, the, the goal is really to be, to be able to provide the UI faster with more flexibility than having to create more files or modules and code and compile and deploy because, yeah, I mean, sometimes, that's just easier to do that, and it's not hard to to implement it. Ooh, the bug. Um, typically, this one on a widget. You know, like we provide a recent blog post widget, but with a custom shape, and and maybe you want something else, and then you have to create a new shape to be able to customize it. Or maybe you don't have all the properties you want, or the query is not what you want. You want more things or filter by something that is not available on the recent blog post. And you have the recent blog post, but you don't have the recent news items. Then you need the projection. And yeah, just to try to make How hard things. do you think it would be to provide some discoverability here in terms of what, what stuff you can access? So I think it should be simple because it's code me all. And code me all, you can provide a list of um, intelligence things and it's it's customizable. So you and can what, even. What do we feed it with? Do we know all of these things at design time when you're writing we, this template? You have to because you can. I assume because here we also provide the list of. Um, yeah, we can know the list of objects. It's like a static prop list of things when you render the template in the editor. So you have to know what you want to pass to the context. So you could also say, oh, and by the way, this is the list of properties you can use for the editor. So I assume it's doable, totally. Or okay. worst case with an extension point to say, this is the IntelliSense file that you need to use for data. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that would be, yeah, because as you said, it's either documentation or we know what we can type, like control space, and we have a list of, oh, you see context, you see query, you see whatever, user and things. Uh, what about localization? What about localization? In this case, uh, it's a content item, so this one would be per, um, per culture. Mm you unless you check the localization option which is not varied by culture and then yeah i mean that's orchard that's beautiful that's the best uh i disagree that this this is enough well i think you should be able to have a template that that you don't have to duplicate the template for each culture and instead you have a, a primitive for uh, that is equivalent to t uh, for displaying yeah. a localized content, and then you can translate that independently from the rest of the market. That's an option on each content type for this part to say you want to synchronize the templates across mm -hmm. content items or not. It's I have, you have nothing to do here. It's just a localization feature that does that. It's it's uh, valid. It's valid for all the parts, and it's valid for all the fields. That's what is implemented in a dev branch. No, but if you have some static text in the template, 
that you want to be localizable? Yeah, well, I mean, you use T, something like that. Yes, we will provide yeah. a T for sure. Okay. And that, that, that's and, my question. And this object is like one line of code to do because it's a standard object that you pass to the context, like the. Right. Yeah. Array. And you can intercept that yeah. and just. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's just what okay. I'm saying. Uh, Another question is how do you register scripts and style sheets from there? Still, um, we could, uh, so this is what, so Lombic has done a module for Orchard 1 and they have done this, they have a script object and you say require, it's like the Razor thing and you can styles.require, you know, mm -hmm. the same thing as in Razor. This is just an object that you provide. So in this case, we could do the same. I, we have to look for a syntax. The question is a syntax, but we. Yeah, sure. Could, like foo.css um and finally do you think that uh eventually we would we would have a file-based version of that same thing and uh, give the option of people for people to actually get rid of razor entirely yes well <laughs> so that's what we try with underbars and we have something already working with underbars so jean thierry made a file one so we have the code working. We just need to switch the template engine. So we have one working with handlebars files. It works. He made a template with an handlebar. Mm -hmm. He made mm -hmm. some views and shapes. Um, and he also made um, a template module from the admin. So you can redefine a shape template from the admin. You, you see the difference. Um, so it's there. The code is there. Yeah. So I, I think that's really necessary because uh, you want an upgrade path for people from you know doing it in the admin to uh, doing it in a theme or whatever. So yeah. So what we when we started the work on underbars for the shape template, let me show you how it looks like. Um, the goal was to see how hard it would be to create a theme with a template engine like this. Mm. Okay, that's really the goal. If we can create the the default theme or the blog and blog the blog theme using yeah. underbars, I mean we can use it for for everyone. So let me show you the what it looks like. Um, where is it? You should find it. Start work on underbars. Okay, and I will look at the file change. HBS. You see HBS um, underbars. Mm -hmm. whatever and he tried to do everything you can do for instance style to add a style so he, he, he made mm. the theme yeah using and there is a t there yep. oh no what, what yeah, was there, must, there must be a t somewhere because yeah. he, he made it you see t set. so what we found is that what we need in this template engine um, is to be able to call shapes to be able to yeah. use stuff from tag helpers the same way yeah um call call shape well render shapes so he made all these ext all these extensions. Uh, you will see there is a class with all the the new thing to be able to. Use. So it's doable. Oh, but, I know it's doable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but there there were many things to to support on because Razor you just have access to all the C sharp you want and then here you have to you have to map everything. Um, yeah. Okay. We need also to think in terms of perf because Razor is compiled to C sharp. Handlebars is also compiled to C sharp. Dot liquid, um, many things look like dynamic, and there is a bug with a PR which is open that is not thread safe. So if you cache the template, it's not even potent in this case. So the, the context is reused across rendering. So if you define a variable in your template, the variable will live will live across renders. I'm like that's that's a no-go for me. So I, they are about to provide an option to, don't make, to not make it the default, but that's weird. Um, yep, looks nice. And so same thing also from the UI, you made that. So from the UI, you can create a new shape and it will, you can change the template of a shape from the UI, from the admin, the template module we had in Orchard 1. So should we not provide that and just rely on a query module, queries module or whatever? Well, that's my opinion, but okay. I, I agree with that. Okay. It doesn't seem right to do this from a view at all. 
And should it be customizable from the view, the parameters? Like, can a query have parameters and be reused with parameters? Or should all the parameters, like, you could say, order by this and created blog post, but a view could say, take three or filters and things like no. this. No, it should you be know. part of the query. Yeah. So, example, you might want from a view or from here to just to render a page, page list of things. So you might want to read the current query string to, or should the query string binding be in the yeah. query itself? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then the, the way to pass parameters is to render a parameter somewhere in the in the URL or something like this when you. Yeah, I suppose you'd have something like tokens that you can use in the expression. In the JSON, okay. Yeah. yeah. Should the DSL be, the, well, should it be a template DSL like to build a, let's say we have SQL, we have Lucene. Okay, there are two different languages. Should we just provide a template engine like handlebars or liquid to build a SQL query and to the same language to build the Lucene or should we have distinct DSLs, one for SQL, one for Lucene, or the same DSL, but the same DSL means we, what I don't like with the same DSL in this case. You're going to, you're going to reinvent link. Yes. And, and that's bad because you are limiting to the common factors, to the common yeah. uh, things. So or you, HQL. You, or... I don't quite understand why we need a, a, a DSL to define the query. What does that bring us in term? I mean, in addition to the quick query builder that we already have, the, you know, just so what you you me, say is, is it so that you can type it in instead of click? Is that no, no? I, I we need to type in whatever. Is it SQL or so? Do you type something like this? Select from uh, content where uh, content, you know, like content item. No, no. I, I mean, we have a we have a way in Orchard One to construct a query from the admin UI, yes? And you can specify the sorting and the filtering and everything. So yes. what's wrong with that? It's limited. How? You can only type what is available on the UI. It's a, it's like a DSL, but a UI DSL. And you need a so lot the, of... The, diff the difference, the difference between that and what we would be inventing is just that you can type it as text instead yeah. of configuring yeah, it. You can copy and mouse. paste it around. You can you can do a lot of things. Um, uh, how about... Uh, this is actually, I don't know, the persistence format for queries and uh, uh, the current projection module is actually just a way to uh, construct that, but it, it's just one way and you can just type it in if you know the language and uh, it works the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we store it in some form. Yeah. Like JSON, uh, probably it's JSON or something. Yep. Yeah, but the, so the same the, semantics. <laughs> but... I made the projection module. I know, I know the issues that mm. is, look at all the metadata we need to, to provide the metadata providers. We need to explain all the fields, how they are, what they contain, same thing for the, and you, yet, and there are many things we can't query because they are not described or you can't describe them or, and not only you can't but, query and everything, and there are many query, uh, query principles you can't use because again, the UI doesn't show that, like grouping, joining, halves, and all the things that SQL provides that you can't express in the UI or you will need a super complex UI. Mm. But wouldn't we need to describe all of that stuff in metadata to provide a good editing experience for a text-based query anyway? Like if we want IntelliSense and mm -hmm. stuff, then we would want that description. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe we could just go from the existing content definition we have and there is nothing to do. Because you see the distinction between reusing what we have already yeah. as a metadata and creating yet another metadata just for the query? Yeah, so the, the yeah. So now with our chart core, the, um, the shape of the data is actually uh, 
much closer to uh, to the persistence format that it has. So things are a little different. Um, so there are two things. There is using actual SQL, but I don't think that that would just go directly to the database, but I don't think we are talking about that. Uh, and there is uh, finding a good DSL for expressing a query, and arguably SQL is a pretty good DSL for expressing a query. Um, I, I hope I'm making the distinction uh, clear here. Like in the same way that HQL actually is a, a SQL dialect over objects, yep. kind of. That will, well, the goal of HQL is also to abstract the mapping logic. Yeah. Mm. So in the end, you well, write yeah, SQL. Yeah, exactly. So you, you query over the shape of your application's objects in, instead of uh, querying over the table shapes. So let's look at this. I have an idea. So we have multiple data sources or querying sources because Lucene can in, will index stuff and will provide this index for querying full text and everything. And sometimes you want to use Lucene to query stuff because only Lucene can do that, full text, for instance. Or it's better for you to use Lucene or faster or whatever in this case. We could also query SQL directly because the SQL database is there and type SQL. What about, have, so, and this needs to be extensible. We need to be able to provide the two of them, like Lucene query whatever kind of SQL query, why not make them just providers? And we could have a SQL DSL query, which uses a, a specific language. I don't know what it is, but just not, like SQL is just one of the ways to execute a query. Lucene, raw Lucene is just a way to provide. We could have HQL or, you see, so not about deciding what language to use to query SQL, but SQL is a way to query. HQL is a way to query. Whatever D SQL is a way to query. The contract yeah. is just the, the return a list of content item IDs. That's it. Yeah, and the the thing that you wrote above is kind of a, a way to drill down into some hierarchical view of uh, of your content items that is more limited than SQL would be, but a lot what more approachable, mean? maybe. That? No, the, the, the one before, the query.content type of blog post. Yes, so, yes, and this is one of the ways to do that, because you could yeah. have something like is yeah. easy DSL, exactly. yeah. that's called like this. Or something that is like language, that's like uh, fr um, from all blog posts, take three ordered you see so, i don't know mm. by created utc so i mean we can imagine any language we want as long as we can imagine any language you want it's like natural selection people will use what they want and if they kill themselves they kill themselves that's called natural selection and so on so how do you implement one of those what do you translate down to well the in the end so the, the ones like this will go to SQL directly. And you can also have a DSL for Lucene, but in the end, it will have to be raw Lucene. Oh, so it's actually responsible for going to whatever data store yes. it, it is against. Yeah. So it's, so none of those could be uh, agnostic of the I, underlying I, data store. Why would it be? Because if it's angusy to SQL, let's use SQL. If you want to reuse Lucene because you want specific things from Lucene, we should expose Lucene specific things. Oh, but it would be SQL against an index that already exists? Oh, in against, SQL, uh, or? for instance, yes. This would be yes SQL. Well, this can, good question. This could be a yes SQL API call, or this could be a raw SQL call directly from Dapper. In the end, you just want the list of IDs. Okay. I will, I'm saying it's just about what each provider wants to do and provides. Yeah, I think that would work. We could have, yeah, and it could also. 
you, you should try it on the maybe on the easy DSL. That would be the easiest to implement, and uh, we can experiment with that and uh, see how that goes. The nice thing with the easy DSL is here that this I have this already. This is a template and. And it, I mean, there so, is uh, there, there is a so Sergio in the chat is uh, showing some uh, faceted search UI, it seems, uh, and that that could actually be another way of uh, building uh, a query that would be more specialized for the the data that you're uh, that you're showing. Why not? Yeah, that's another provider for queries. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And if yeah, if it's extensible, that would be easy to. Uh, to that's the, yeah, that's the query engine, the query and module. You could even you could even yeah use that on the front end maybe and. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we have multiple providers of different DSLs, then would an admin choose which one he wants to target when he's making yeah. the query? Yeah, if there is okay. more than one in the system, he would have to choose. Right. Yeah, when you create a new query, you say which type of query. Yeah. Mm. So that yeah, that's. I assume that so you can list the queries, you can edit them, and when you create new, it says what kind of query you want to create. SQL. Maybe may, maybe we have separate parts. Maybe each of those uh, DSLs comes with a with a, a part, and you just add that part to your. Uh, content type and they have a common stereotype and uh, contract to uh, to provide the the result. Yeah. And then I suppose we could also have one provider that is just UI, sort of like an Orchard one today. Yeah, yeah. that's what. Yes, yeah. what I think of it. Like when it's you say new, yeah, um, the indirection being like what kind of query you want to create, and it it sends you to the editor of this thing. So actually, we, it's interesting what you're saying, Daniel. Uh, here we would be basically splitting the projection module into two, one that yes. is the query part and one that yep. is the displaying part. And the displaying part could be another way of doing what Sebastian is doing with a, yep. with a liquid template here. But yeah. it, it, would be, it would potentially work with any query provider, any DSL. Well, yeah, the displaying part here in this case, the liquid. So, if I take the liquid part, which renders a template, we could expose a property called queries and just call it by its name, recent yep. blog post. Okay. Yep. That's it. So, and and if I want to use it from Razor, I can resolve the service yes. I queries and then call it from Razor. Just here, you just say, give me the evaluate this query name. And this name will just trigger whatever instance of query was there and returns a list yeah. of content items. Yeah, you've, yeah, you've decoupled the querying from the yeah. displaying, which gives you the opportunity to replace one or the other independently. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Well, that's why you made the comment in the first place that you didn't like exactly the queries in the view directly. Yeah. And, and just to restate what we just said, Query something here they provide from different providers mm -hmm. and and these providers have their own editors, mostly at the beginning text editors for their own DSL. But as Daniel said, one editor could be just a complex UI based on metadata and everything. Yeah. In the end, it will just save its own storage, its own format of query, and when we say evaluate yourself, it will give me a list of content items and done. Then, 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 then. List of content items. Maybe we want to return something else than content items. That's mostly the usage here, but we might want to return kind of a projection, you see? Like, oh, I can return the list of slugs directly. It's more, it's easier than return all the content items and you access the slugs. So I'm not sure that queries should always return content items. If the language can do something else than returning content items, I don't know. But that's really a question of whether we want the queries to only do um, filtering and sorting, or if we want them to also project into whatever you want. 
to render, right? Because if they just return content item IDs, then you would have you would be responsible for taking whatever part the of content items. Yeah, you're you would be, yeah, you would be you would have to load the content items from this set of IDs, yes. Uh, right. Yeah, the queen. Well, I, uh, maybe you could I just think there's a, there's crazy. a point to separate those two things. Uh, you, you, you can let the provider decide what it returns and when it does the, the evaluation. By lazy, you mean like return some sort of proxy well, I, that just goes and gets whatever you ask for? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, I, but I would say in, in this case, look, if you have queries and this thing, this thing returns a list of IDs, well, you can say uh, dot content item, something like that, okay? Or you can say just four and and you will just evaluate the IDs which are returned, if you want. Mm. So as if tomorrow it returns a list of slugs or only one value, then it returns one value, you take the value and you display it or you do whatever you want with mm. it. Mm. We just need a helper for content items that is able to load content items from a list of IDs. I was going to say that there's a, there's a concern with having to do a bunch of joins and stuff after the fact, but that's not really the case in Orchard nope. Core, is it? No, no. no. And, and by the way, this is the default design that every time you see something on the front end, there are always two things. First, index the query in the, the query in the index to get a content item ID, and then requesting to the objects to the document store the content item ID with a prim primary key. Mm. They are separate. Right, yeah. So whatever they are done this way, they are done in two steps, which also lets, lets you cache the content items in memory if you want, because mm. you are sure to only query the index by its ID. So there is no more deserialization, no more loading all the text from the database if you cache it. Right, and when you get the content item, then you get the complete document with all the yep. parts and fields and everything. Yep, exactly. So that's why it's interesting to to have this notion of free the query is just to return a list of IDs, not even the content items themselves as a whole, a list of, um, um, how what's the name, the, the value, the, the atomic values or whatever, yeah, strings, IDs, whatever. Yeah, well, it could, it it could return a list of objects that have the ID and that have this uh, method to get the, the content items out of it. Mm. Uh, no, it should be just data. I don't talk about object because then uh, well, each, each, each way to display something should just... Okay, so then, then that's something you should be expressing at the query level. Because here you're, you're moving again that decision into the view. Well, the query should be explicit about what it returns and yes. uh, what and the yes, physical and logical it, format. Yes, what it that's, is what, and, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we don't care what it does internally to get the actual content items, but yep. uh, that should be expressed on the query. Just as a description or metadata. Uh, so yeah, one one thing I did in Descent to deal with that uh, n plus one query thing, I, I don't know how you implemented that, but uh, uh, I'm I'm actually filling a list of IDs that everything involved in the rendering of the page needs. Yeah. So in the end, I have a full list of all the IDs that I need to fetch, and I I do that in one operation. Um, yes, but but um, it's good when you can know that. But let's say. No, oh, it have, can be a, it. It can be it can happen in multiple phases. Yeah, but uh, in multiple uh, passes. I, I so, but maybe it's a limitation right now, and we need to fix that. But if I have five widgets and a content item, mm -hmm. each widget needs some content, so each yeah. widget will do its yeah. own. Yeah, I can I can show you uh, offline how that works, but okay. that it does that yes. Because what we have thought about it does it effi uh, efficiently. I have another suggestion, actually. Um, and so what, what I was uh, thinking of, uh, and we talked about it in Orchard 1, and we even talked about the name, preemptive cache, was that here it's fine to run all the queries that return IDs, OK? Um, but when they do the second step, which is give me the content item for this ID, because we have preemptively cached these content items, there is no query. It's just 
an identity map in memory. Mm -hmm. So that solves all the issues, I mean. Yeah. You can have 10 widgets, they will do their query to get the content item IDs. We didn't cache it, but we don't have to load these content item IDs because they're in memory. Mm -hmm. Or we just load the ones we don't have. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Good. Questions, topics? I think that was good. The goal also with this querying thing is to prevent from having to rewrite a full projection module because projection is about querying, is about UI, is also about indexing all the content in some um, mm -hmm. yeah, queryable thing. Put, yeah, it does its own indexing. Yes, and and it's sad because we already have some index indices in the data database because every facet aspect is already defined for most of the content, the parts and everything. We also have Lucene in indices. So we, I think we should try to reuse what we have said. Yeah. And for perf, like how many times have you wanted to, to, to render something on a UI and the API or the projection just creates a, a, a query which is too slow? And yeah, and then you have that huge cliff that you're getting thrown off because you need to uh, move from a fully designed yeah. projection to a fully programmed HQL yeah. query. And sometimes for just a little thing, like yes. you want to do a little thing, yeah. and no, as you said, the cliff is huge. Yeah. So here we just say, well, the cliff is just, okay, convert this DSL to this SQL, if you want to. Yeah, and this is the only thing you need to change. The rest can stay the, the way it is. Correct. As long as we provide ways to, like you said, tokens like yeah, where. So Sergio has a question for you in the chat. Is it in Spanish or in English? <laughs> in English. <laughs> Good. So which question? Last one? Last one. Uh, well, I guess. Yeah, what I remember is that I didn't understand the question. I don't, I know, that's too much, too much thing to, to read. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, later. Okay, I will. I assume I will have to write the comments down. Okay, good. How, how do I select everything? I, I think you can you can save the conversation as a whole. Select all. Right click, select all. Uh, I did Control A. Okay, okay. and then copy. And Perfect. Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, everyone. Good discussions. If you have other comments, just send emails, open issues, go on Gitter and, uh, or Skype. That works too. Always available. Um, thanks, everyone. See you on um, Thursday. <laughs>